right guys, thanks for joining me. Have you ever wondered how powder coating is done? We see a lot of guys, they're powder coating their sleds, their rails, their arms, but we really don't know what the process is. So we're here today at Auto Powder Coating. They're gonna do this chassis, this tunnel for this old land of ours. And they're gonna show us the exact process that they use to put the powder coating on this tunnel. Okay, there she is, masterpiece right here, fellas. All right. 1971, you think you can do something with this? Uh, a land? Yep. We did a, an Olympic here, here last year. You did an Olympic? Uh, I think it was a 72 Olympic. Right on. Well, we beat it. 42 years old. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, uh, I used to race a lot of these. I used yeah. to race against them because I had a baby ball. Oh, yeah, right on. Okay, so where are we bringing this? Right on. Holy moly. I think a purger. I see. That's it. So now this is the first stage. This is where they sandblasted. They're going to peel all that old powder coating off or whatever they put on back in 1971. We can't stay in here because this stuff will ruin our camera. So our tunnel is just about done being sandblasted. Yeah, go ahead. It's done. Let's go check it out. How's it look? Yeah. Some corrosion here. Got some holes in here. Some holes, so I guess that area needs to be fixed. Oh yeah, yeah, take a look at this. I mean, this is pretty hard to see when we started and brought it in, but this is all rotten in here. See the holes? All right. I had a feeling this might happen. So, so this is pretty old. We'll turn it over. Here, try here, uh, wait, flip it up, there. You can see through here, you can see the light. You can see all the pitting from the rust. There you go, my hand behind there. All right, you know, this will happen sometimes. It's a sandblaster, it's old metal, rusted. So I'm gonna have to take this home, do a little bit of welding, clean this back up before these guys can do the rest of their job. It's unfortunate, but that's it's unfortunate, but that's the reality of dealing with an old sled like this. That's the purger that cleans out those filters, that noise that goes off. Kind of gives me some flashbacks. All right, I'll bring this home. Thank you for your hard work. Well, you know, this is the reality when you're restoring old sleds like this, or anything old for that matter. Yep. You, know, you, put, a, you put a sandblaster to something that's all rusty, you're going to run into some issues. So back to the shop. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's the way she works. All right, Kent, we're here at Auto Powder Coating. And I just wanted to let my viewers know the differences between paint and powder coating, why we'd want to take a sled, a sled part, chassis, rails, A-arms. Why'd we want to get them powder coated instead of painted? Uh, well, actually, a powder coating is a paint. It's just, it, it's a paint that goes on uh, about four times your thickness of a wet paint does, so it gives you a, a better corrosion resistance. Okay. Uh, and also, because of the baking temperature and the bonding of the powder, it is a more a durable paint. It's harder uh, to scratch it than okay. what wet paint is. But actually, a powder coating is just a different a method of painting. What about the primers? We use either an epoxy primer or a zinc primer. Uh, the epoxy primer is better in uh, in wet environments. Uh, if you're if you're doing uh, like sick pool of boat parts, it is better in those environments. Uh, uh, the zinc is used primarily on steel that's going outside. Ah, uh, okay. So for our application, the yeah, uh, the it epoxy depends on the 
on the application. Uh, you can't use a zinc on aluminum. Uh, they don't get along. Right. Uh, so anything that's aluminum that you're priming has to be the epoxy. Ah, okay. Now, length of time and uh, to do something like this, wh what are we looking at for each kind of process? Uh, well, the blasting, it depends on, on the product that you're blasting. It could, like a, a sled that you have there, but typically they're a wet paint on the older ones, yeah. so they blast off fairly easy. Uh, if they were powder coated, like the newer ones, I'm, I'm assuming they'd be powder coated. Yep. They don't blast off easy. They take a lot of time. So it depends on, on the paint that's on there. Now, okay, well, what about this? What if I brought a, an, an all aluminum chassis in? Obviously, you're not going to sandblast that. Uh, yes, we would. Oh, you would? Uh, we would because my paints of any type, I don't want to stick to aluminum. Right. So when you etch blast it, all we give it is an etch blast. Okay. And, and all we're doing is we're impinging the aluminum so that the paint's going to bond to it. Uh, okay. Whether you're using a powder or a wet paint, that is the best way to go unless you have a chemical acid bath to help the adhesion. Uh -huh. uh, in our case, the best thing that we can do you just is, give her a blast. is give an etch blast. Now typically, you know, the uh, powder coating, I've had it before, you can almost hit that stuff with a hammer. What, what is it about this whole process that makes that so hard? It's the, the chemical compounds in the paint. It's the fact that the paints are, the heat of the paint, it actually, it bonds them. There are bonding across linking agents in the paint that actually make it very, very tough. So, and and it's, it is like a plastic sized uh, paint. Uh, un, unlike your wet paints are, are pigments. There's a lot of pigments. In, in, in the powder recordings, you have a lot of plasticizer. You got pigments in that also, but you got the plasticizer and the cross linking chemicals in there that really make it a tough, tough paint. And you're right, uh, out in the shop, if we want to see if the paint is baked properly, you actually hit it with a hammer right. to test it. If, it. if it's baked properly, you won't see the hammer mark at all or, or a very small mark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, it is hard, and yeah. that's why it is so hard. Okay, well, why do they call it powder coating? Because it, in its raw ha form, as it's applied, it is a powder. It's, so it, so it goes on as a powder? It's the consistency of a flower. It looks like flour. Uh, on the larger hoppers, w when you pour the box of powder in, if you close your eyes and, and you put your hand into the hopper, it would feel like your hand is in a dry a jar of water. Okay. Uh, but it's dry. It feels j uh, just the same uh, as what water is, and that's why it's called a fluidizing hopper. Uh, but in its rough form, it is a powder. Okay. It, it comes to us as a powder. So if you're trying to spray powder on something, uh, that never sticks. How would, uh, that, how would that work? Now, on the... the uh, the, the, the guns that we have have a, an electrode on the end of it so that as the powder comes out of the gun, at about, at about six inches away from the gun, it puts a positive field in the air. And as the powder goes through uh, the positive field, it picks up uh, the positive charge. Everything in our booth has got a negative charge. It's grounded. That's what makes it attractive. Uh, so you must lose a lot of product. You actually, a powder coating is very efficient uh, because of the electrostatic, it, it, it makes it very efficient if the person is setting the gun up properly. Okay, well, while on the topic of heat, yeah. when, uh, now when you prime it, it's got to go into the oven afterwards, you bake on that epoxy primer? You have to bake on the primer at first, but you don't give it a full bake, you only, you take it from a powder into a liquid so it flows out, and that's all you want. Because if you over bake it, and then when you put the top coat on, you won't have adhesion. Oh. Now the powder is too hard already. Okay. So you only give it a partial, you melt it right. onto the product. 
So then you put your top coat on afterwards. So our slide's only half baked at that point. It'll only be half baked uh, at that point. Okay. Yes. So okay, and then you uh, then you put your powder coat on, and yep. then uh, then you put it in, and this is like it's like a melting process, like you were saying, uh, or like a it, flowing process. It is a melting. It flows like an ordinary uh, uh, paint. You can actually they say that you can't put a run in powder, but you can. But basically, it's the when you put it in for the final bake. Uh, all your powders, they'll have a temperature on it, which it could be 375. It could be, there's some low bake powders. I believe they, uh, they're now in the 300s, uh, the 200s. Uh, most of ours are 375. And then it'll have a time. It'll be eight a minutes or seven minutes. But what that means is that the substrate, in your case, the tunnel, it has to hit 375 and hold it there for X number of minutes. Okay. If you don't, you don't get the cross linking and it'll melt, but you won't have good adhesion. You'll be able to take that with a hammer, you hit it with a hammer and it'll crack off in chips, ah, yeah. in chips. So you have to hit that target, the time and the temperature. But to do it yourselfers, they see that and they figured, okay, I'll put it in, 375 for 10 minutes. It's not. You have to, the metal temperature has to hit that. So you have to think of a, of, of a ramp up. Through experience, your tunnel, it'll be in the oven. On the final bake, it'll be in there for about 40 minutes. Because oh. it takes about 20 to ramp up, then the 10 See? for the baking. That's the kind of experience that you got to... That, you know, well, it takes time to gather this experience, yeah, and then yeah. you got to well, know what you're so, doing. Yeah, we learned the hard way. Yeah. Through well, I've been at it uh, since 1972. So. Wow, holy so, smokes! So. Now, okay, um, how many coats do you put on? Do you put several coats of uh, powder coating on? Uh, you can put a clear on top of that if you uh, wish, but you don't have to. Uh, typically, if it's done properly, you put a coat of primer and then your top coat on. And that's but you don't you don't build it up and make it thicker. You, thicker. you don't have to, no. Okay. No. Actually, if it gets to, uh, our powders are made for about two to three mils of coverage. If you get too much on, it, it will start to get uh, brittle. In your case, like when you step on the side pans, oh, yeah. if, if it's too heavy, it'll, it'll crack there. Okay. Uh, so you don't want to go heavy. There are powders that are made for high bills, uh, 10 mils, yep. 15 but not the standard powders. Okay, and what about uh, UV coatings, UV resistance? Uh, powders uh, are made for either indoor use or outdoor use. Uh, indoor use doesn't have any type of UV protection. So if they're out in the sun, they'll go chalky very quickly. Within a half a year, they'll go chalky. Uh, the outdoor uh, powders are made with the UV protection, and uh, uh, they can be outside uh, for years. Right. Now we ran into a slight problem when we brought our old chassis in, and this is something that can easily happen to anybody, especially with an old beater like what any, we had. Any of that old stuff, I've seen it in a lot of stuff, old chairs that we do, yeah. old lawn chairs, uh, gates. Uh, yeah. you know, people have the decorative uh, gates and they want them redone. Uh, yeah. The you, sand you blaster have, goes right through I actually it. have one gentleman that we had, uh, a bumper. <laughs> he, he wanted the bumper on his truck done. We started blasting it and uh, it toast. we blast right through it. What I normally tell people is when they call me and they say, can I do it? I say, take a hammer, walk around if you're on your bumper or your step guards, yeah. hit them with a hammer. If they're solid enough, yeah. then yeah. we can do it. And if not, then you better buy new ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that old chassis, we have to, I mean, it's 42 years yeah. old right now. I'm sure we can get another 20 years out of it, even with my shoddy welding patches on there. But uh, it should be good enough now. Your guy's going to reblast it a little bit. Yep, he's going to clean up all the wells. Right on. Make it all cleaned up, and then we can rock it up and we'll get it shot. Right on. We get it on the, the primer on it, and then rock and roll. Yep. Right on. Well, let's see it. Cool. Come on in. Take a shot. Sure, sorry. Blasted. 
Yeah, right on. Yeah, I gave her a couple other shots in there. Sweet. It's good to go. So yeah. now, now gets the primer. Hang it and prime it. That, yeah, oh yeah, so you're gonna mask off these. Uh, these threads, pins, we mask off so paint doesn't get onto off them, so yep. it's easier to put your nuts back on. Yep. Gotta get, gotta get those nuts back on. Yep. Right on. Get ready for it, it's coming. And then we'll uh, pop the mask off here. Okay. A special light heat masking cake. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. It's an amazing process, you know. It's. Uh, I've had a lot of things painted. I've had things powder coated as well. It's nice to see behind the scenes how actually everything is done. And we know the kind of quality of work we're getting, right? The whole poor old girl's getting a whole new life here, Jamie. Get another 20 years out of this. Although Keeley's gonna be driving it, so God knows how long it's gonna last. Hey? Until he hits a tree. So as you can see, there's a lot of processes that you have to go through with powder coating that with wet coat, you don't have to. There are areas like threads have to be taped off or plugged. So if you got paint on, you won't get a nut on it. Uh, we're still just gonna go through. If, if the tolerance is tight, you have to mask them off so you don't get paint inside there. Yeah, yeah. You can't just take it you can't food. You can't chisel that stuff out afterwards either. Well, you it, can, a lot of work. but uh, most uh, our customers, it's easier. Yeah. We mask them here, so we have to go through all the parts, have a look at the parts, and see if there's any areas yeah. that we have to do some extra work to. Cool. <laughs> you remember that? When we talk, yeah. started, are they tight in there? Did the skin go through? Fairly tight. Okay, Sandra. Yeah, we might want to hit it a little bit. On there, too. Are, 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 are some on there too. Yeah. Yeah, I should have thought all that. Well, this is the kind of stuff that, from years of doing it, that you just... You know when you see something. Yes, I know when I see it, yeah. what has to be now, done. Now, what, uh, what about this hinge? The hinge, there's nothing you can do with it. It doesn't come off. It, we are, when it's, it's all painted, we will have to break it free. Because okay. it, it, if you leave it like that, it'll be like that. Yeah, yeah. And you'll have to take a pliers or something and break it free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. You can do. But you got to do it because, I mean, it's all raw yeah, metal yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. That, that hinge is actually still on there, which is pretty amazing for a 71. Usually they're all busted off. He knows what he's doing, this fella. You see everything on the boot there now. All the hangers are all grounded at the ground. So that's why he's he hung that up there. Uh, the mobile parts just take the ground off the wall and put it on. Oh, okay. So everything gets the ground. Everything has to be ground. Yes. Right now we can blow it off, getting all the all the sand off of it. Right. Now, what color will this primer go on? It'll go on. It'll be a dark gray. Don't. Yeah. I've never seen the powder coating process, and I never had a clue of how this whole thing is done. This is the electrostatic. Oh, it just goes right around. Painting on the backside, and this is what makes it more efficient. Uh, in the in the powder, in the first pass that you make supposed to be you're putting on about 60 to 70 percent of the powder now on this thing here because of all the angles you can't achieve that all the time but when you're doing like flat stuff it's, it's your first pass transfer efficiency that you want to get up high now now that you've got a coat on there now you, you you've got an insulator on there so it's yeah, yeah. second coat you, you are going to have more of a waste in the third coat, right. and so on and so on. So this is pretty. This is 
This is much more efficient and better because it actually, it'll suck it into the little grooves and the nooks and crannies that you'd never hit with a paint gun. Um, yes and no. Uh, you got to remember that static will go to the closest okay. the path that it wants to. So no, when you're shooting into, into corners and cracks and crannies, it's, still, it's, still it sometimes can be more of a problem. Okay. All right. Look at that old girl, getting a whole new life. You know, we have a saying, I, I, uh, I restore antique Japanese swords, like uh, five, six, seven, eight hundred year old swords. And when they're really tired, we say that there's not too much you can really do to restore them, but you put the makeup on. Yeah. That's putting the makeup on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not going to be a perfect restoration showroom kind of thing, but it's still going to, you know, it's going to give this some it's extra gonna, life. Yeah, it's going to last few years. It'll probably last longer now than it did originally right. because this is a much better coat of paint than you originally had on. Right on. I was just saying, it's amazing that you can stand this, this close to a paint booth and not have to have the doors closed and not have to have a respirator on. And, uh, you know, you can't even smell it. You know, like most paint booths, everything closes right up. They've got a major ventilation system on it. And, and there's no, lots of mean, the powder coating is environmentally friendly. There's no POCs in it. So, yeah, it is the paint of the future. Wow. So. Your uh, dust collector unit, does it just fill right up the... Uh, well, what that... Uh, the sound that you're hearing yep. is actually air being pushed back into the filters uh, backwards. It drops into the hopper at the bottom, and usually about once a week, we empty it, and we put it in the oven, and we, and we turn it into a solid. Oh, yeah? And then it can be disposed in the garbage. Wow, very cool. Okay, so he's nearly done this. Now, you can, obviously you can't touch this. Will it, if you go to touch that, will, it, will the powder come off? It, you'll take the powder off. Oh, oh. okay. So then, uh, yep. So it's almost done, then it's gonna go in the oven. And we're going to bake this at uh, 375 for 40 uh, minutes? Well, I believe our oven is set at about 4, 15. Okay. Because we have to leave it a little bit higher. Okay. Uh, uh, but yeah, it'll go in for about 10 minutes and bake, and then okay. All right. it'll, it'll come out. Just so happens I brought a, uh, a prime rib roast. Uh, we'll chuck that in there too, okay? Yeah, but time is <laughs> all painted and done. You, you could do that. <laughs> Get that prime rib roast cooked up in there. Be a nice smell all through here. So what we'll do is we'll put this on there, we'll, we'll get it in the oven. Okay. And then he's gonna do the color change in the meantime. That's awesome. That's warm.
make it impossible.